Now, continuing in verse 25 of chapter 6 of the Gospel according to Matthew, the Lord gives instruction to those who are following him. Now, be careful about this. He gives instruction to those who are following him at the time he is present. Now, some of these things do carry over to today. And remember the focus on the previous verses is that the Lord is speaking about laying up treasures for ourselves in heaven. So if we're so concerned about treasures that we're going to lay up here on earth and possessions we're going to have for ourselves here on earth, we lose our focus on heaven. But there is a contrast between what he tells those to do as he sends them out two by two a little later on in the scriptures and what he tells them to do when they will go on after his ascension. So here we want to pay particular attention to the instruction that he's giving as individuals go out and go from place to place. In other words, your daily walk through life rather than an actual evangelical practice, although these things can certainly apply. Therefore I say unto you, in verse 25, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, for what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment, or clothing? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. They're not employed. They don't work for anybody. The only thing they really do is they look pretty. They pop up, they look pretty, and then they die. But look at verse 29. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon, and Solomon the wisest of all kings, in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. A lily is more beautiful than Solomon, and a lily comes up out of the ground that way. Solomon did all of these things, had all these riches, had all of this influence, had all this wisdom, had all of this earthly power, had horses and chariots and everything else, had a wonderful city, construction, a commission to the building of what we now refer to as the Temple of Solomon, and also to his own royal quarters, decades in the building of those two together. And yet, is Solomon as beautiful as a lily as it comes out of the ground? No. Verse 30, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Where's the focus now? Well, as we look through all of scriptures, we see that that unification of mankind and God is by faith. Abraham was a man of faith. And by his faith, he was counted righteous, as were many, many of the other Old Testament, in fact, all Old Testament saints, many of which are named throughout scriptures, especially in the New Testament. And again, we refer to Hebrews chapter 11, the Hall of Fame of Old Testament saints, where we see numerous people being mentioned with regard to their faith and how they pleased God. Verse 31, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. I'm going to pause there for a second, because it's very important, because someone might look at that and say, well, okay, but many of us are Gentiles. I'm a Gentile. And they'd look at that and they would say, well, Gentiles seek after these things. They seek after what they want to eat and what they want to drink and what they want to wear, and to extend that where they want to live and what kind of social status they want to have and, and all of these kinds of things. At this point, Jews are still Jews. In fact, Jews are always Jews. That doesn't even change. The Old Testament Jew is still the Jew. He still has the promise of God that God gave him from the very beginning. 
There are some folks that say that the Jews have lost their promise and it's now been given to the Gentiles. There are some that say that Israel is no longer Israel and now the United States is the new Israel and things like that. Scripture does not teach that. In fact, read carefully the book of Hosea. Read carefully the writings of the prophet Hosea and you will see just in that compact writing just how much God loves Israel and how much it is his heart's desire. You can almost see the tears of God being wept as Israel has strayed away, as Israel has treated God as if she were a whore in his employee. That's how heartbroken God is when God wants Israel to be his beloved betrothed wife for eternity. And now in the New Testament, we are, we learn in the, in the book of Romans that that we are grafted into this tree, that we are grafted into this family that God at one time had reserved only for Hebrews and for those who would worship as the Hebrews do. Now we're grafted in through Christ Jesus so that we become a new branch in this original olive tree that's known as Israel. It's such a beautiful, beautiful thing. Again, not to, not to belabor it, but to reiterate that Old Testament saints, Hebrew and non-Hebrew Old Testament saints, all saved exactly the same way, by their faith in God, by their faith in that Messiah to come, in that promise of a better country that they would partake in. The Lord Jesus Christ has promised us in the New Testament that he's going to prepare a place, and if he goes to prepare a place, that he will come again and receive us unto himself, that where he is, we may be also. It's just a wonderful, beautiful promise in John chapter 14 that it just, it just sends chills up and down your spine even to think how much God loves you and as much as he loves you in doing these things. And illustrations of how much he loves you is to show how much he loves even the smallest thing like the blades of grass and the lilies of the field and the sparrows of the air and so forth. If he loves them that much to make them that beautiful, Imagine what he has in store for you, made in his own image. But at this time, the promise stood with the Hebrews. So when he refers to the Gentiles, he is referring to those that are without the scripture. So basically what we can say is, those that don't even follow God, those that don't even know God, those that don't even know anything about the scripture, they seek for making merry. They seek for eating and drinking happy things. They seek for wearing nice clothing. They seek all of these material things. That's not the focus. That's not the focus. The focus needs to be to lay up that treasure in heaven. 